Hello everyone. Welcome again in our reservoir simulation class. And today's topic, we will talk about direct solution of linear sets of equations. So let's go to the discussion. Okay, direct solution of the linear sets of equations. Okay, previously we arrived at this, you know, this equation. This will give us the solution of our computation, reservoir simulation computation. And you see, we have here the transmissibility for x axis. And this is, of course, the pressure. Again, the transmissibility. And you see, we have a flow rate term. And this is the capacity. And again, the pressure and t is for the time and of course we want to solve this equation and we sort of simplify the the equation with these coefficients so we rearrange the equation and we get these coefficients a i b i c i and b i and I starts from one all the way to N. Okay. And we know from previous week, we, we know that the equation or the coefficient for A1 is zero. And AI, where I starts from two all the way to N, AI is the transmissibility of X in i minus half and b1 is minus transmissibility x direction at grid i plus half minus cpi and so on and so forth bi bn and the coefficient for ci cn equals to zero d1 is minus three per four alpha and so on and so forth okay so this is the sort of simplified form for us to solve simultaneously this equation until finally we get the solution for our reservoir simulation okay and in this case the simulation will be the distribution of our pressure across the reservoir okay you know we have this parameter pressure we want to know the distribution of our pressure across the reservoir. And that's why we need to solve these sets of equation. Okay. Okay. And we know previously that we will solve those equations, those many, many equations with using matrix computation. Especially we will use Gaussian elimination approach. Okay, so let's let's see this this text. So as an illustration of solution of linear equations, okay, this is very important. So we have actually linear equation. And by knowing that we have a linear equation, we know the method that we will use to solve those equations. So we need to consider the following set of three equations. We have a11, x1, and then a12, x2, a13, x3 equals to d1, and then a2, a, a21, x1, and so on and so forth. We have three equations. All right, just, just follow me. So the Gauss elimination method starts by multiplying equation one. This is the equation one. I multiply the equation with minus a21 divided by a11. And of course, you need to multiply both sides. The left-hand side, you multiply it by this one. And also the right-hand side, you, all, you multiply by this, this one so that they will actually they will be the same equation with this equation one 
because you multiply both sides, the left side and the right side with the same number, with a same thing. Okay, so you maintain the equation one. Okay, but yeah, and then you will get this one. Okay, please note that we have a to two and this one x2 and so on and so forth so you get a new equation all right you get a new equation after you multiply this equation one with this one and then add the resulting equation to equation two okay and we get a new equation two which is this one. This is the new equation two. Okay, just bear with me. This is how we do the, how we, how we find the solution using the Gauss elimination method. Okay, so we will continue. And the next step, we multiply equation one, all right, with minus A31 per A11. And then we will add that to equation three and we get a new equation three which is this one okay a new equation three which is this one okay so now we have new sets of linear equation okay the first one is this one and then this is the new equation two and then this is the new equation three Okay, let's check the equation one. So this one, A11X1, A11X1, A12X2, A12X2, and then A13X3. A13X3 equals to D1. So equation seven is actually equation one. Okay, we just, yeah, we just want to emphasize that Yes, this is the equation. Equation seven is actually equation one. And equation eight is the new equation two. Whereas the equation nine is the new equation three. Okay, after we multiply equation one with something and then we add to the equation two and then to equation three. Okay. The above elimination process is called forward elimination. Equation nine can now be solved directly to find X3. Okay, so X3, this one X3 equals to D3 double accent divided by A33 double accent. Okay, all right. Just again, just follow me so that we understand the logics behind the, this method. And then we shall now perform a backward sub substitution. Previously, it's forward elimination, now backward substitution. This simply means that as each unknown is computed, it is substituted into the, into the equation above and an additional unknown can be found. Okay, for equation seven and eight, this is done as follows. Okay, so let's check the equation eight and equation nine. Okay, and let's check the equation seven and sef equation eight. Okay, so for equation eight and seven, this is done as follows. So we have X2 and we have x1 okay so x2 d2 xn minus a to 3 xn x3 okay and then for x1 we get that from equation 7 x1 equals to Okay, D1 minus A1 to X2 minus this one, A1, 3, X3, and all of them divided by 
this one, the coefficient of x1, which is a11. Okay, so we get that. So this is the x1. And for x2, again, x2, so it should be d2 dash, okay, this one, d2 xn, I call this symbol xn, and then minus a to 3 xn, x3. And all of them divided by a to 2 xn, which is the coefficient of x2. So we, we got that, we understand that, right? So it's easy. X2 and X1, it's they are easy to calculate. Okay, so based on the procedure above, a general formula for solving a set of equations consisting of n equations and n unknowns using Gaussian elimination method may be derived as follows. So we can do forward elimination, okay? to generalize the equation, to generalize the method. So we use AIJ equals to AIJ plus AKJ. And then we multiply with minus A1K divided by AKK, okay? So please note that J equals to K plus one and then comma N and then I K plus one comma N and k equals to one comma n minus one. So remember, n equations and n unknowns. Okay, so that's for a coefficient and for d coefficient, di equals to di plus dk multiplied by minus a i k divided by a k k and you know the setting. a equals to k plus one and comma n and then k equals to one comma n minus one and then backward substitution okay to get the solution for x so xi equals to di by the way please remember so di is here okay in this case d1 d2 and d3 or for the general form, you know, this, this is the di, okay? And actually, if you open what di is, it's actually this one. C, the capacity multiplied by pressure at I multiplied by, I mean, Cp is, yeah, Cp is the capacity multiplied by pressure at I at time t plus the flow rate term, okay? So that's di. So d means actually something. A also means something. It's just, it's not just a coefficient. A is the transmissibility actually. A, A1 is zero, but A2 is transmissibility of x i equals two, and then u minus half this one, this one, this one. So I means something, B means something, D means something, this one. C means something, okay? So in this case, we use I, A, I, B, I, C, I, but in other case, we use A11, A12, A13, and so on and so forth. Okay, so to find x using backward substitution, xi is di minus the summation, starting from j equals to i plus one, two n, i, a, a, i, j, x, j, all of them divided by a, one, one, where i, I mean divided by a, i, i, where i, starts from n all the way to one, okay? Yeah, I know it's quite, you know, wordy, the index i or a i j. Yeah, it's quite difficult to, to, to say, difficult to mention or difficult to 
talk about it, but I hope you understand. That's the index, I, J, K, and so on and so forth. Okay, now we will talk about banded coefficient matrix for regular grid systems. Start from one dimensional system. Okay, the one dimensional finite difference equations derive for the following grid system. Here we have our grid system, one dimensional. Okay, start from one, two, three, and then all the way to I minus one, I, I plus one, all the way to N. Okay, we generally solve the three diagonal pressure equation. Okay, so here we have linear sets of equation. Okay, linear sets of equation and possibly we have many, many equations and we will use Gaussian method. We will use matrix system. Okay, so we will deal with this one. So we have this equation. Okay, AI, the pressure for oil at I minus one plus B one and so on and so forth. Okay. And graphically, the coefficient matrix may be presented as this one. Okay, so you know, matrix is actually, we build matrix from equations. Okay, we build matrix from equation and later we will have a factor here, a factor of pressure. Okay, so from from many, many equations like this, we make a matrix. And we, we get the, the coefficient from this equation, like this one, A, I, B, I, C, I. If we set the matrix, we have A, I, A, B, and C. And you know that A1 is zero, okay? A1 is, is zero. That's why here in the first row, we don't have A, okay? And others, it's actually zero like this one. Here is zero. So we have what we call band, banded coefficient matrix. Okay, so here we have our matrix all right and we have this the diagonal the banded coefficient matrix this is just for one dimensional system okay as can be seen the compact band of this coefficient matrix only consists of three non zero diagonals okay matrix or matrix, maybe we, we use matrix term, okay? So we have non-zero, A, B, C, non-zero, and we have a compact band, okay? Only consists of three non-zero diagonals here, the diagonals. The other are zero, okay? Thus, our Gaussian elimination algorithm may be simplified to operate only on the band itself as shown in the following. So we have forward elimination where I starts from two all the way to N. So coefficient BI is BI minus C at I minus one multiplied by AI divided by B at I minus one. So that's for coefficient B, and this is for D. So DI equals to DI minus D at I minus one and so on and so forth. So for the computation of PN is DN divided by BN. And for backward substitution, I equals to N minus one comma one, and the pressure at I 
can be calculated using this equation. Okay, so that's for the one dimensional system using Gaussian elimination method. You can calculate the pressure PI, okay, where I starts from N minus one all the way to one, okay, PI equals to DI minus CI, PI plus two BI. So it's like this, okay, for I equals to one, so the pressure at one is D at one minus C at one multiplied by pressure at two divided by B1. Okay. And for I equals to N to calculate the pressure, you get this one. So it depends on what N is. Okay, so you can divide your grid system to maybe 10, 10 grid blocks, 100 grid blocks, 1000 grid blocks. Okay, that will determine how many equations you will have and how you build the metric system. Okay, so that's for one dimension. And now we continue with two dimensional system and of course it becomes more complicated. So for a two dimensional system, let's say we have grid system like this. So from the center, we have IJ. Move to the right, okay? I will change, so I plus one comma J. Move to the left, I minus one comma J. And if we go here, let's say it's, we call this Southern, okay? So I, I not change, I comma J plus one. And if you go to the North, I comma J minus one. So that's our two dimensional system, okay? Which is more realistic than one dimensional system, but you get more realistic system, you get more complicated system to solve. Okay, so that's, that's, yeah, that's the reality. All right, so the set of linear equations to be solved for pressure, okay, we want to know the pressure. We want to know the pressure here, the pressure here. We want to know the pressure distribution everywhere. So we use this set of linear equations. All right, now the equation becomes longer. Now the equation become more complicated. We not only have coefficient A, B, C, and D, we get two new members, which are E and F. Okay? All right, again, yeah, we will build the matrix. Actually, this, this is the, the matrix. And this, this is our band. Okay, this is our band. But we have zero in the midst. And here, the rest, of course, are zero. Okay, so you know this is our band. We, we have the first diagonal at the center and we have E diagonal and F diagonal. E and F are the new coefficients we get from having the two-dimensional system. Okay, again, we have a banded matrix, but now with five non-zero diagonals five non-zero, A, B, C, E, and F. D is the solution actually, yeah? I, no, it's not the solution. D is the other side. Okay, so again, we have this one, 
all right the matrix and then we have factor pressure which is the solution and we also have this d okay so for the main matrix we we don't talk about d right so that's why here we have five non zero equation non zero coefficients a b c e and f okay the band is not compact here. Yeah, the band is not compact. The, the only compact band section is here, ABC. But between ABC and E or ABC and F, we have zero here. So that's why we say the band is not compact as the two outer diagonals are positioned apart from the rest. Yeah, they are apart from the rest. And we have zero something here. Okay, for numbering along the I direction, we get the coefficient matrix at right below. So we number along X direction, I direction. So we go here. So I, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we start again from here, from the left. 8, 9, 10, and so on and so forth. And then start again from 15 from the left, 22 from the left, and 29 from the left. We get this one. So we, we do the numbering along the I direction. And what do we get? The bandwidth, okay? The bandwidth of the above system may be computed at this one using this equation. So NB. The bandwidth, okay, is 2 multiplied by nx plus 1. So here the nx, okay, start from 1, 2, 3, all the way to i, all the way to how many grid blocks you have in i direction or in x direction. That's nx, okay? And that will determine the bandwidth. Okay, if we had numbered the, the, the grid blocks along the J direction instead of along the I direction as we did above, the coefficients E and A and F and C would have changed places. So if we do the numbering using J direction, so from, from here, from the top, we go down a one, two, three, four, five, and then start again from start again from the top, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, start again from eleven, sixteen, twenty-nine, twenty-one, twenty-six, and thirty-one, all the way starting from the top, go down. Okay. We need to know the number of grid blocks in J or Y direction, NY, okay? And we can calculate the bandwidth, NB equals to two NY plus one, okay? And you know, if we do the numbering along J direction, the coefficient E and A and F and C would have changed place. That's for two-dimensional system, okay? And since the, since the number of operations involved in Gaussian elimination solutions is approximately here, number of operations, NB squared, the bandwidth squared multiplied by NX multiplied by NY, it is important to number the grid system along the shortest direction, okay? Because we want to reduce the bandwidth. And if we reduce the bandwidth, we will reduce the number of operation. And if we reduce the number of operation, we will have faster equation, faster computation, okay? And smaller load for our computer. So we want to decrease the NB if we can. And if we, 
And we, we can do that by doing the numbering along the shortest direction. So if you have like, this is the grid system, okay? And you go there, you have NX, you go down, you have NY, okay? And how about the numbering system? You, you number the grid system along the shortest direction, okay? Let's say NB. Yeah, we, we can calculate NB, two multiplied by NY plus one. But you can also have NB, two NX plus one. So you choose the numbering in such a way that you will have NB becomes smaller. So you, you need to compare between NX versus NY, okay? If, for example, you have, for example, we have a grid system, NX equals to 10, NY, or maybe like this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And X is seven. And Y is five. If we select the numbering across J direction, along J direction, so you have the bandwidth and B, two multiplied by five plus one. So 11, the bandwidth. So you get smaller NB, you, you square the NB, 11 squared, multiplied by NX, 7, multiplied by NY, 5, and you get the number of fractions to finally get the solution. Okay, but if we use the numbering across or the numbering along the I direction, so you get NB, Two multiplied by seven plus one is fifteen. So fifteen squared multiplied by seven multiplied by five, you get the number of operations. If you do if you do the numbering along i direction, so of course in this case numbering along the j direction give us less number of operations, right? So a check of this may be included in the Gaussian elimination algorithm in our software. So even though the matrix contains only five non-zero diagonals, the zeros between the diagonals will quickly be filled during the forward elimination process. Therefore, we need to let the elimination process include the entire band. Banded elimination routines are readily available. Okay, and will not be discussed more here. All right, banded elimination routines are readily available when it, it is used in software, simulation software. Okay, but it's not the main topic of our, our class today. But we know that we have linear sets of linear equations involving many, many, many equations and we use Gaussian elimination method using matrix operation to solve those equations. And we, we use banded elimination approach and the routine, the program, the, the coding, okay, the coding of banded elimination are readily available in many, many software, okay? We continue. Now, what about three-dimensional system? Okay, it, of course, it will be much more complicated. Okay, since the number of operations involved in a Gaussian elimination solutions, yeah, you know, three-dimensional system becomes very, very complicated. Okay, starting from the center, I, J, K, 
go to the right, go to the left, go up, go down. You get three-dimensional system. Of course, your computation, I mean, of course, the equation becomes more and more complicated. Okay, so for a three-dimensional grid system, it becomes much more complicated here. So the set of linear equations to be solved for pressure has seven non-zero diagonals on the left, on the left-hand side, like this one. So we have pressure to be solved. We have A, B, C, D here, of course, and then E, F. We have two new members of coefficient G and H. Of course, we have X, I mean NX, NY, and NZ. If you set them up in metric system, they will look like this. Of course, it's not a line. They are coefficients. So ABC coefficient here, he, E, F, G, and H, and rest are zero here. Zero, zero, zero here. Okay. The bandwidth of the three-dimensional system, if numbered along the x and z direction first, may be computed as here. So the bandwidth, if we number along x and z direction first, so it will be 2nx and z plus 1. OK? Again, in order to reduce the bandwidth, we want to reduce the bandwidth to reduce the number of operations that should be involved in the computation, okay? Thus, the number of operations involved in the solution, we should number the smallest plane first, okay? Number the smallest plane first, x, y, or z. For this system, the number of operations is approximately Four multiplied by nx powered by three multiplied by ny multiplied by nz powered by three. Okay. Thus, even for a small system in three dimensions, the number of operations becomes large. Of course, three-dimensional system requires more computation. It is much more complicated compared to 1D system or 2D system, of course. For, in, for instance, for a small 1,000 block system where nx, ny, and z equals to 10, the number of operations for a single solution is around 40 millions. So you can imagine reservoir simulation is complicated. But of course, fortunately, we don't need to solve using our our brain, hand computation, no need for that. We can do the computation at quite relatively fast operation using our computer, right? Therefore, direct solution is normally limited to small systems, okay? For large system, actually, we need to do iterative methods, iterative methods. So direct solution, I mean, by using direct solution, we use Gaussian elimination method. Okay, Gaussian elimination method using bandit matrix like previously explained. It's, it can be used for normal, normally limited number, small number of operations like that. But for large system, iterative methods are required. That's for Cartesian coordinate. And what about radial coordinate for circular grids, for example? A two-dimensional grid that requires special attention is the R theta system shown below. Okay, here. 
So we usually use this circular grid. For example, we want to specifically analyze area closer to a well. You know, we have radial flow towards the well. So we use circular grids to get better approximation of what happens actually, what actually occurring closer to the well. So we use circular grid, okay? So for this system, the set of linear equations for this system is identical actually to the one for the two dimensional system for Cartesian or rectangular coordinate system, okay? In this case here, this equation. The numbering sequence used in, in the example above is similar to the one used for the rectangular system. So it's like this. Numbering along I direction. So one, two, three from the left to the right, starting again from the left to the right. However, there is a significant difference in the coefficient matrix structure of these two grids. So you see, we have A, B, C, and then E, and then we have E again there, and we have F, and we have F again there. So while all F coefficients are zero for row eight in the case of the rectangular grid, the equivalent row in the cylindrical case is connected to row one. Thus, the structure of the coefficient matrix for the cylindrical grid becomes like this, okay? Although the required modifications to the banded Gaussian elimination routine are minor, most standard routine do not have provisions for this type of structure. Okay, of course, circular grids, it becomes more complicated and most standard routines do not have provision for this type of structure, unfortunately. Okay, and now talking about effects of wells on coefficient matrix. So what happened actually on our coefficient matrix if we use well? if we place a well in a particular grid block. So using the, so using the rectangular grid above as example, and assuming single phase flow, let us add a well to the grid with perforations in, in all grid blocks of row J. Okay, so we have I here, and we have J, okay, row J, okay, row J. We perforate all the grid blocks of row J here. We perforate that. Okay, we place a well there. We perforate all the block, all the grid blocks of row J. The coefficient matrix of the system will of course be affected by the well. So in case the production rate is constant, the bottom hole pressure will be an additional unknown that must be included in the solution. We add a term to the linear equations. All right. Here, this is our new term because we place a well there assuming single phase flow and assuming production rate is constant. And now the bottom hole pressure will be unknown. Okay. And we need to know that Wij is not zero for perforated grid blocks. But for non-perforated grid blocks, Wij equals to zero. And this is the equation again. We have pressure here, the solution. We have the coefficient A, B, C, 
and we have new coefficient w and p this is the pressure bottom hole pressure actually this is also the solution that we want to know we want to solve at j rho okay that's the effect of wells on the coefficient matrix in addition we add a new well constraint equation to the system of equations and the and the constraint is flow rate at j equals to the summation of all the perforated grid blocks the summation of the flow rate at grid blocks i comma j at this row j there are perforated so that's if you sum them up you get the total flow rate from j row and we can calculate the flow rate from each of the grid block at i comma j from here wc well constant all right and lambda okay and the pressure difference okay pressure difference from pressure at i at j rho minus the bottom hole pressure okay and lambda is the mobility from the previous lecture so well constant multiplied by the mobility multiplied the pressure difference that's how we calculate the flow rate at each grid block and if you sum them up the flow rates from each grid block that are perforated of course you get the total flow rate here so placing a well at a certain grid block or and setting the perforation that will change that will influence that will have effect on the coefficient matrix of course because actually the coefficient matrix are from the flow equation and in the flow equation we have the well term flow rate term okay and yeah effects of wells on coefficient matrix the well term will also alter the B term of the linear equation. Okay, so B term will be changed. Okay, with the well term included in the discrete flow equations and adding a well constraint, the system of linear equation become like this. So now we have new member here, W. Okay. And we have E, A, B, C, and F. Again, the required modifications to the banded coefficient, to the banded Gaussian elimination routines are minor, at least for the simple case above, but most standard routines do not have provisions for the type of structure. Right, but, but of course, this is actually from the source from the past, but now with many advancement in the reservoir simulation, in coding, of course, this, this case is relatively easy to be solved. All right, so that's actually the, the, the discussion, the class for the direct solution of the linear sets of equations. So, to, sum, to summarize all of the slides here. So we get the flow equation. We get, we know the grid system that we have. We, we realize that we have sets of linear equation, maybe many, many equation, and we will solve that using matrix approach. And we can do direct solution. We can find direct computation to get the solution using Gaussian elimination method. And this class here explains about that. The Gaussian elimination method 
to get the solution. And in this case, the solution is the pressure distribution across our reservoir, All right? So that's for direct solution of linear sets of equation. And on the next lecture, we will talk about oil water simulation using impasse solution, All right? So thank you and see you again.